Good morning guys, welcome back. I started my day here at the Home Depot buying paint and supplies for so many DIY house projects that we've got to get done today, but also over the next like few weeks. I'm thinking it's gonna take us. We've had so much going on lately, and if you've followed me over on Instagram, then you would know that our flooring install is finally finished, and we're so excited about that. We're so thankful to be able to like walk on actual floors and not subfloors anymore, and just so excited to not live in a construction zone, but part of that process still needs to be done. All of the caulking, priming, painting, drywall repair, everything like that is on us. So we're gonna be working on that probably room by room or space by space over the next few weeks. Both of our kids' rooms are already reset. We wanted to make sure that we got their spaces back in order as soon as possible because they were just tapped out. They had been so fatigued by the construction zone that was our house and they needed their spaces back. So we did that. Mine and Derek's room is the one that I'm going to be working on today. We have a lot of caulking to do in there, a lot of trim painting and door painting and all of the painting. We want to reset the furniture, do a little bit of a uh, bedroom decor restyle almost and just create this peaceful sanctuary space for us to be able to rest at the end of every day because we have a lot of long work days with tedious time-consuming work ahead of us so we want to have somewhere to ground us and reset and help propel that momentum and keep that stamina going to finish the rest of the house. We've got to work on the kitchen, the dining area, the living room, the playroom. I mean the floors are done in there but that's about it. So we've got so much going on coming up over the next couple of weeks but today we're focusing on kind of like a mini bedroom makeover. So anyway I grabbed some paint. This is the bare cabinet door and trim enamel. It specifically said door and trim so that's why I got it and it's in a satin finish. This is the color Swiss Coffee by Benjamin Moore. I got that in the 75% strength and we're going to use that for all of our baseboards, the top trim, the trim around the door casings, and our closet and our bedroom door. So, so much painting that we're going to do today. So let's get home and start caulking and getting all of the prep work done so that we can paint it and reset our furniture. Okay, so this is our starting point in here and you can see all of the furniture is just kind of pushed into the center of the room so that we can still have access to the baseboards which need to be caulked and painted. Luckily, they are pre-primed so I don't have to do any of that but you can see the gap there so we need to close that seam with caulk and then also nail holes from the brad nails that you use to secure them in the wall we need to caulk those as well so it's a seamless finish thankfully i don't really have any caulking that i'm going to need to do over here but i am going to paint all of that top crown molding or trim whatever it's called the door trim and casings and then our closet doors our bedroom door and just give it all a more polished seamless finished look. I didn't do any of this the first time that I painted because I knew that this would be happening and I figured I'd cross that bridge when I get to it and we're at the bridge so we've got to cross it. Before I can start painting though I do need to caulk everything that needs to be caulked. So this is what I'm going to be using. It's a quick dry paintable acrylic latex caulk and this says that it's ready to paint in 20 minutes. Regular caulk you have to wait like two hours so let's hope that this actually works. Now if you have some of these gloves on hand, I would definitely suggest you use them. It would even be worth it to pick them up from the hardware store just because this part can get pretty messy. At least any other time I've caulked, it's been pretty messy. And something that it took me forever to figure out is that your caulk gun comes with the cutter for the tip. Mine is right here, and you just put it on a 45 degree angle, and then it'll snap the tip right off for you. Baby wipes will also 
make it a whole lot easier than using your finger. I feel like whenever I am working on a DIY and trying to complete a task that I don't have a lot of experience with like this, I always do it wrong before I do it right. So I started out by using the caulk gun first and then coming in with the baby wipe to clean up and it did work, but it was very messy and required a lot more effort. So I figured out this method that I wanted to show you up close. I held the caulk gun at an angle to to the seam of the baseboards, put that baby wipe in front of it, and then just made sure that I was pulling the trigger at an even pace, not kind of pumping out too much at one time. I pulled both the baby wipe and the caulk at the same time, and it was just effortless. I got a lot of really good long runs out of this, very minimal cleanup, very minimal excess, almost no waste of the product at all, and it just worked really well. So I wanted to show you that in case you have a project like this coming up. These corners always feel like they're a little bit more difficult because the gaps can be wider and there's a lot of these little nail holes to fill in all of these areas. So what I like to do is turn my caulk this way, kind of pointed up. So every time I'm on the baseboard, it's more from the side. But in these corners, I wanna point it up from the floor so that I'm not dragging it down, but instead dragging it up. And I like to fold my little baby wipe so that it's easier to handle and work with. And I just kind of settle that under the tip of my caulk gun, and this is gonna protect my floors. And then I start down here in this corner and slow and steady wins the race here. So just caulking little bits with even pressure, coming in behind it to clean up any of that excess. And as I clean up, I'll use that to fill the nail holes. This way we're not wasting the material and we're not making a huge mess. If you go in with more, then that means it's more to clean up. So just taking my time to do it slowly and get it done right the first time so that we have much easier time here minimal cleanup and it'll paint like a dream. So if you pay attention to the baseboards, you'll see that in some areas, they're a lot tighter to the wall than others. And so in those tight spaces, I can pretty much do just one bead of caulk, it goes in a straight run and that's all there is to it. But then in those larger gaps, it requires a lot more product to fill them and to have that seamless finish. So you might see me go back a couple more times or do a little bit extra cleanup because it does require extra product things like that and I just wanted to point it out to you in case you are also working on a project like this I know that when these things come up it can feel like this is so wrong you've done something wrong or you're not quite nailing the method and you need to troubleshoot and figure it out I just wanted to let you know that this is totally normal this is how it is in almost everyone's house but most people don't see it because they're not DIYing it. It's being done by a professional. I had a contractor say to me once, just think long term, wait till you see the finished product and just know that caulk and putty are your buddy. And I thought that was so funny, but it's so true. So I wanted to pass it along. If any of you are going to be attempting a DIY project like this, just to make sure that you don't get discouraged or feel like you shouldn't even attempt to do it yourself because you don't know what you're doing. It's fine. None of us know what we're doing until we figure it out, right? And you will figure it out. These hiccups are okay. They're not even really hiccups. It's common this stuff happens. So anyway, I wanted to point that out and those words of encouragement so that if you are working on a project like this or thinking about a project like this, you know what the reality of it looks like and you can be prepared and kind of Keep that in the back of your head to keep you pushing forward even through those extra frustrating parts. Okay, sorry, but I had to turn the fan on because it was getting toasty in here, but I have all of the 
baseboards caulked. It's looking really good, pretty seamless. And I just need to wait for that to dry before I can start painting them. It says only 20 minutes, but I don't wanna waste the 20 minutes. So I think I'm gonna start with the bedroom door and closet door and maybe even this upper trim here because I never painted that either when I was first painting the room. And then definitely by the time that I'm finished with that, I'll be able to start painting down here. There were just some parts of the baseboards that had like larger gaps in between the baseboard and the wall and required quite a bit of caulk to fill that and make it look seamless. So I wanna give those spaces especially enough time to dry. It says 20 minutes, but I'm assuming that's for like basic caulking or um, maybe like a square room minimal caulking maybe is the better way to describe it. But since there were some areas that there's a lot of product concentrated in one area, I just wanna make sure it has enough time to fully dry. So I think that starting over here is gonna be my best bet. It's gonna make things go like faster and be more efficient with my time. So they're dirty. Everything has been dusty from all this construction. So I do need to wipe them down first. I think I'm just gonna use an e-cloth and some hot water, get them nice and clean, dry them off, and then I can start painting. I wish that I had thought to show you guys the layer of dust that was on these doors and the trim and especially in the decorative details of the doors, so much had collected. And I don't know why I didn't think of this before we started on this whole project, but I just didn't realize how dirty things were going to get. And the entire time the crew was cleaning up after themselves, they kept a pretty tidy and clean workspace. But even still with them doing that, doing a shop vac at the end of every day, there's still so much dust and debris that collects whenever you have major construction going on. And I was not prepared for it. If you have doors or trim that look like mine where they're pretty textured and have a lot of decorative features and you're wanting to paint them, I would highly recommend that you do it this way using a combination of both a paintbrush and a foam roller. I felt like this really cut down on the time using that foam roller because then I didn't have to hand paint the entire thing, but I still was able to get one coat coverage this way and I love the way that it turned out. So I'm just using the paintbrush on the entire door frame, all of the trim around it because the foam roller definitely wasn't gonna work there. I also cut in around the doorknob and the hinges and then those decorative cutouts on the door, I made sure to use my brush as well. And once I got into the actual door portion, I was pretty sloppy, but also the trim is wide enough that I didn't have to go too slow. It was really just on the very edges, like around the walls and around the hinges and things that I had to be super careful about what I was doing. But this is a real-time clip and you can see how fast I was actually painting in real life. And then once I had gotten into all of those decorative areas, I went back in with the foam roller on all of the flat portions and it worked out great. At first I was a little worried because there isn't any nap to this foam roller and there is a lot of texture on the wall, but that wasn't a problem at all. It got right in there. I just had to apply a little bit of pressure and I got some really clean lines this way. It looks absolutely beautiful and I'm really happy with the way that it turned out. So if you're gonna be painting the doors in your house, the trim, all of that tedious paintwork, consider getting a foam roller as well because it can help you out a ton and save so much time. Okay, so I just finished painting the bedroom door in the Swiss coffee and I love it. I feel like this is such a clean, 
seamless look. It's beautiful. I should have done this to begin with. I'm glad that I'm doing it now. And you can really see the difference now compared to like the closet doors, which are just a stock shelf white paint for trim. Let me back up into this angle. It's just such a different look. It makes a huge difference. So I'm loving it. I'm really happy that I went this route. Obviously this could end up being something that's just a short term trend in that people go back to that classic look of like the crisp white baseboards and crown molding, window casings, door frames, things like that. Or if that's your current style, that is totally fine too. It's beautiful as well. But for now, I love the way that this looks. I'm digging this trend. I hope it sticks around for a while. If it does shift back though, it's just paint. It's easy to paint over. It's easy to change. Nothing like this is permanent so it's okay I'm enjoying this look compared to this look so I'm gonna keep going and paint the closet doors next but I don't think I'm gonna film that because the dresser is right in front of it it's hard to get to and it's also hard to set up the camera so I'm gonna paint that and then I will bring you back and show you what I do with the baseboards okay both of the doors are matching now I love the way that that looks I think that they are gonna dry a little lighter or at least I hope so because looking at them now they look darker than the wall color but let's just hope that it dries lighter than how it's looking right this second. But we're gonna move on to the trim. I have a brush and a roller here and I'm gonna show you guys a trick for how you can paint all of the baseboards without having to tape off and not ruin your floors. And it's just this. This is a piece of cardstock. You could also use a file folder, but I like the cardstock because some of these areas are tighter than others and a file folder is thicker than this, so it might have a hard time getting under it. But you just, slide it under here like this you can use your roller along the edge and that way you can get all the way down there get crisp clean lines without getting it on your floor and then you just pull it out and keep going i have a couple of real-time clips for you here because i wanted you to be able to see how i was painting so up on the top portion of the trim i wanted crisp clean line. So I was making sure to go very slow, really taking my time. And then as I moved down the baseboard with my paintbrush, I could go just a little faster, but I still wanted to make sure that I was getting into all of those little crevices of the detailed portion of the baseboards. Then once I got to the flatter portion, I was able to use my foam roller and that cardstock and just push the cardstock along as I was rolling the paint on. And this worked beautifully. It saved me so much time for having to do any kind of taping or putting down anything to protect the floors besides the cardstock. It saved me a lot of time there, but it also saved me a lot of time compared to having to hand paint the entire baseboard. So I got the whole room done in I think 30 or 35 minutes, and I was able to get one coat coverage with this as well, so I didn't have to go in for a second pass. I just let it dry completely, and it was is completely opaque now of course there are still going to be like sometimes tiny little spatters or drip marks or you'll see where my cardstock doesn't quite get all the way to the seam and I didn't notice when that happens no need to freak out just use a baby wipe or a wet washcloth or a wet paper towel and just clean it up immediately and it'll be like it never happened especially on hard floors like this we have LVP floors and it was wiping away no problem now if you don't notice it you also don't have to panic just wait for it to completely dry and it will scratch or chip right off it will not mop off with water when it's completely dry water will get it off when it's wet it'll dilute it and wipe it away to the point that it doesn't exist there anymore but if it does completely dry just go in with your fingernail or even a plastic putty knife and you can just chip it right off off and it'll be like it never even happened.
Day two, all of the doors, trim, crown molding, and baseboards have been painted. They are dry. Earlier today, I took off the blinds from the window so that I could paint the window frame and windowsill because I forgot to do that yesterday. It's been an, about an hour and a half now, so it should be dry enough for us to put our furniture back. We need to move our dresser over here. We need to move those nesting tables. Back to this side of the room, obviously put down our area rug and get the bed back where it belongs. And then we can finish up in this space, do all of the decor and get it all reset and put back together. One of my favorite things about having these new hard floors is that with this heavy furniture, we could just put cardboard underneath of the legs and slide it into place. When we had the carpet, we could not do that. It would get snagged on the carpet, it wouldn't stay under there, and I'd have to lift it, which is really difficult on me. If you've been around for a while, you know that I was in a really bad car accident a few years ago and suffered a pretty substantial back and neck injury and so moving furniture like this is just not fun but it really was a breeze using that cardboard method so if you have hard floors and you're moving furniture around i would definitely suggest that we didn't get any scratches no snags had no trouble at all we did choose to lift our bed frame and that's mostly because that one leg is broken the contractors actually did that when they were installing the flooring and i was really bummed about it at first i'm sure that we'll find a solution for for it but also we have so much furniture that had to be moved around the house and a lot of it with like glass portions of it and none of that broke so if this is the only casualty I'll take it there was a lot of dust and dirt underneath of the bed though so I'm going to use the shop back to get all of that out before we roll the rug under it This is how our bed ended up looking and I love it. It's so light and casual and airy for the summertime, but I love all of the textures here. There's so much interest without being suffocating under a big heavy duvet or a quilt. But once I had gotten all of that set up, I moved on to our dresser and it desperately needed to be wiped down. You could see that big layer of dust that had collected. And then I'm gonna do a little bit of minimal decorating over here. And that's gonna be a theme throughout this entire room is keeping things very minimal. I love these stems from A Floral. They're currently on sale and it only took two to fill that vase. So check the description box if you're looking for links to anything that you see in today's video. I always try to do my best to link everything that I can and if I can't find things available online then I link similar items at a similar price point just so that you can kind of shop the look if you are wanting to recreate this in your own space. In this corner I kept it really simple again just choosing this tree it's a faux tree from studio mcgee's collection i think a couple of years ago and it's just absolutely gorgeous and then finishing up on my desk is going to be it for the entire room it is very simple very minimal like i said but just so peaceful and serene and it is exactly what we were going for we are just so happy to have this space My room has not been this clean in months. This feels so good right now. I love how minimal things are. I did that on purpose just so that it could be a serene, calm, safe space for Derek and I at the end of long DIY days that are ahead of us, but I am just loving this. This feels so good after the chaos that we've been living in for the past month. That is everything for today's mini bedroom makeover. I 
I'm so excited with how it turned out. I'm so ready to just be able to relax here at the end of our long DIY days ahead of us. So anyway, I hope that you all enjoyed coming along on this process. Make sure that you are subscribed and you've got your notification bell turned on so that you don't miss any of the other room makeovers, transformations, DIY projects that we've got coming up. Thanks so much for choosing to spend your time here with me today and I'll see you all in the next one.